Yeah, so I want to talk to you tonight about um, how can we come to a place to do mighty things for God. Um, if you guys look at that picture and you think like that's the, the cream of a crop, that's the elite. We disqualify ourselves and think the reality of how we look like is in the next slide, you'll see. So that's more how we think we are <laughs> in God's kingdom. So, <laughs> but I want to change that. It feels like you rock up with a Swiss army knife to a gunfight, but it's, uh, we, we need to be mighty warriors for God. So um, to the next one, um, is it a priority for you to make an active difference in God's kingdom? Why I say that is if you look at the ancient times, the weak and the old would stay at home and the rest would go and fight for a nation's freedom. So, uh, and also, I don't want to face my creator one day and say to him, no, I was more of an indoorsy person. I didn't want to get my hands dirty for his kingdom. I think you'll get the same answer as what the guy got with the one talent that buried it. And it's in the lines of it was a, a worthless servant and cast into darkness. So I'm just saying. <laughs> Um, so why do we need to be trained? The enemy walks around like a roaring lion. The interesting thing about uh, predators is that they always go for the, 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 the easy pickings. So they go for the weak ones at the back, and they go for that. So if you actually weaken the spirit, the devil's always going to pick on you. Um, can we stand our ground? God needs dependable and consistent people for his kingdom. And uh, the spiritual world is constantly full of warfare. So we have to armor up, that, that it says in Ephesians 6. So it's the armor of God. So whose armor is it? It's not ours. It's God's. It's very important for me. Another example of that is that Michael, the archangel, so if you guys know the who, Zun, the who, he's like the general of generals. In Revelation 12, he basically uh, defeats a dragon, the devil. He, in Jude 1 verse 9, says, the Lord rebuke you. So he didn't even take judgment on himself being so high. So we must always be careful when you take on armor and try to fight the devil as yourself. You can never fight the devil as yourself. <laughs> Amen. Um, so what, to the next one, what's the criteria to get into the spiritual Raki program? <laughs> uh, what's necessary for a cut? So the, the one that's there that's the most important that I don't have there is actually uh, who can run a five-minute mile? Probably Gabriel or Brett. <laughs> no, but, but just a joke. But honestly, uh, we, we are a temple for the most powerful entity in the universe. So maybe we should show, show a little bit respect for that temple. Just saying. Um, so let's start with the first one, faith. Um, faith, anything done without faith is dead works and zero effectiveness as we know. Um, Without faith, we cannot please God as we know in Hebrews 11. And then how do you build your faith? You need the rhema word to build your faith. So that's your spiritual PT. So your spiritual PT is basically, are you reading your Bible every day? If you don't read the Bible, how is the Holy Spirit going to break open scriptures for you to give you that rhema word of what you need for your life? Are you praying? Are you spending time in church? That's your spiritual PT. If you're not doing that stuff, you're always going to stay weak. So let's go to the next one, obedience. So in God's word, we have to be obedient in God's word, but also don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Um, grace is no license to sin. If we just get it out there. <laughs> um, also, obedience uh, shows our love for the, for the Lord in 1 John 5, 3 to 5. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. That it's not an effort. It's not something that you, you toil over that's a, a mission for you. And then also we have to be uh, obedient to follow the Holy Spirit's instruction because that also gives us spiritual gifts. And spiritual gifts is at the end of the day that's going to be make you an active part in the kingdom. So, and also don't treat the Holy Spirit instruction as a suggestion, but it's an instruction. So, it's koparal het gepraat. Let us gaan. Yeah, so we can go to the next one. So, it's a uh, locked identity. Um, so your identity and who's or who you are spiritually or physically, that is the question. Do you think you should come from a lineage of prophets and preachers? Does that matter? No, it doesn't. God shows us with Gideon, he was the weakest of the weak, but with only 300 warriors, he smashed the whole nation. So does it matter with what opportunities you grew up with? It doesn't. Um, when Jesus was tempted, his identity was locked. 
the, de the devil repeatedly hammered on his identity throughout that temptation. But he, Jesus was locked in what the word says. So that's important for us as well. Are you getting your identity from a word? Um, the next one is strong humbleness. So strong because it's not having a negative mindset of yourself and what God can do through you. Uh, some people mistake humbleness for feeling uh, you won't amount to anything or no, I can't take that. That is not true humbleness. Um, in, to show this in Matthew 5, 3, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs of the kingdom of heaven. It's not poor that means a state of nothingness. Poor means dependent on someone else for provision. So you just know where your power coming from, where is your might coming from. Um, so because you get a lot of people that they don't think they'll amount to anything. And you really need to get over that and know that humbleness is not thinking you can't, can't do anything in life. Um, then also humble in your ability, but be confident in God's ability like David, Joshua, and Caleb. Um, so they, what's in striking about those three is that they knew the reality. They saw the giants. They saw everything that was going on. But they walked in the truth. What was the truth? That they, was gonna, they, they were going to get the, the, the victory. Uh, you're not going to stand against me, uh, giant. And that's the sort of things that we have to walk in. We have to walk in the truth, not in the reality. And also the fight is for the Lord. God brings the victory. It's not out of our own might that we are going to get stuff done. It's in God's hand. I mean, with a snap of a finger, God, when King Hezekiah prayed, 185,000 warriors of the enemy was killed in a, in a second. So do you guys think there's anything too tough for our Lord to do? And then the last one there is to keep right away always. Um, I think that's the biggest, as soon as God starts to use you, that's probably one of the biggest stumbling blocks that you'll have, is that uh, that stuff is, will try and puff you up. If you look at the, all the kings in Judah, the good kings of Judah, there was only about 25% of them that were good. But all of them, at the end of the day, kind of fell a little bit in that trap at the end of the day. God used them mightily. And they got good increase, but later on, they fell because of pride. So we must always just know that God is the true source of everything. <clears throat> yeah, so there's not enough time to read through the whole psalm, but I really, really want to encourage you to read Psalm 144. Um, it, it, it tells you who trains you, who protects you, who delivers you and gives you victory. And that prosperity follows God's children. And that's what I said about having that pathetic uh, mindset we shouldn't have that God's favor follows for God's children. So I want to ask you, is that stuff attainable? Is that only for the, the, the Rakis of today or is it attainable for any one of us today? Yeah. So it's basically more of God and less of you. So who wants to do mighty things for God? <laughs>